So according to Goodreads, I've read over 500 books now, and these are the only standalone books I've ever given five stars to. Let's see what they are. So indeed, Goodreads says I've read over 500 books now over many years. I can't remember when exactly I started using Goodreads. I know my first reading challenge was around 2014 or something. I'll put it up on the screen. Over the course of many years of all of the books that I've rated on Goodreads, these are all the five star standalone books. I will make another video and I will link it um, down in the description and up here somewhere when that one is out with all of the books I've given five stars to that are part of series. I think for sure I used to be a lot more generous with my five star ratings, which is why I have so many because in recent years, I don't remember having that many five stars. I still, of course, give five stars every once in a while, but now I feel like to, to be worthy of five stars, a book has to be like incredible, my new favorite. And this was probably true for a lot of these books at the time that I read them. But because I've read so much now, I think I just get more picky, you know, and I have different standards. I have my two leaning towers of books here. <laughs> so let's just go through them and I'll try to group them as best as I can. Okay, I'm gonna start off with all the sort of general fiction, historical fiction, that kind of grouping, just so to have a little bit more organization in this mess. So first of all, we're gonna start with The Secret History by Donna Tart. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with this book, but it's definitely one of my favorite books. And I think this is one of the ones where if I were to reread it now, I would still give it five stars because it had such an impact on me when I first read it. And I just remember it was mostly because of the writing and the atmosphere that Donna Tartt created with this and of course the characters. And so I don't think those aspects would be different if I were to reread it now. This is kind of a literary fiction, dark academia thriller novel about a group of elite students at a prestigious uni university that are a bit eccentric and they're kind of dabble into philosophy. And at the beginning of the book, one of them gets found dead in the forest and it's up to the rest of the group and their philosophy professor to figure out the circumstances of what happened. And a lot of dark secrets get revealed. The writing is incredibly beautiful, very atmospheric. Highly, highly recommend. Next, I have A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. This book broke me and I would probably still give it five stars if I were to reread it, just because it's just one of those books that pulls at your heartstrings and doesn't let go. It made me cry. I would describe this book as like the first 10 minutes of the movie up. <laughs> That's kind of the general vibe of this, but essentially it's about an old grumpy man called Ove who is very much alone and kind of hates his life and hates his neighbors and hates everything. And this is essentially the story of how he kind of learns to view life in a different light all thanks to one of the new neighbors that moves in next to him. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is a World War II historical fiction novel and we follow two POVs, a blind girl and a soldier. Now this is one I've read years and years ago, so details might be a bit blurry in my head, but from what I remember, the blind girl has a radio show where she talks about like secrets of the war and then the soldier is really really passionate about radios and he has like a collection of radios and he repairs radios and he finds the radio station of this girl and they sort of form a beautiful connection. It's just one of those novels that is just beautiful to read uh, from start to finish and I think there's definitely a lot in here for pretty much every kind of reader. And then there were none by Agatha Christie, a classic mystery whodunit novel. I'm sure you're well familiar with this. This was just very, very tightly plotted. Everything about this is just right. It's about 12, 10, 10 strangers who all get summoned to this island where there's this mansion of someone who's rich and somehow has loose connections to all of these 10 people and they send letters and they bring them all into this one house and then one by one they start dying in very very weird ways <laughs> and it's up to the survivors to figure out who is behind these murders 
This is super quick to read, super entertaining, very, very well plotted. Oof, this one. <laughs> the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is another World War II historical fiction novel. I actually have three, apparently, in this stack, but this one, oh my god. Ah, this one broke me so much, I remember. I'm pretty sure I have a reading vlog where I feature this book. I will link that video down in the description if you're interested to kind of hear my thoughts when I first read this book. But yeah, man, this... This follows two sisters in the French countryside during World War II. And the sort of position of women through the war and their resilience and their bravery and the tragedies that befall them. These two women face so much tragedy and horror and over the course of this book and yet you can't stop reading about them. I, d I don't know, I absolutely adored this and I would definitely still give this five stars and I think you should definitely read it if you haven't already. And the last World War II. <laughs> historical fiction novel is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This is a weird book because it also has some elements of the fantastical. The first POV we follow is of Liesel, a nine-year-old orphan living uh, in Germany during the Nazi occupation and she loves books and she loves stealing books and the second POV is a POV of death Again, this is one of those books that I read a really, really long time ago, but it really left an impact on me. But I definitely remember this being really, really beautiful, and it's definitely one I would love to actually reread in the future. I I'm not huge on rereading books, but now that I'm making this video, I realize there's a lot of these books that I would really, really love to give a second read, and I think this is one of them. Okay, next category I want to go over is fantasy. Now, the thing about fantasy is that most fantasy books are in series, so most of my fantasy books will be in the companion video to this, but I still have some five-star standalones here, starting with the most recent, actually the most recent book I've given five stars to, and that is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. This is a indie-published, Asian-inspired fantasy that I absolutely loved from the very first sentence. This was fantastic. This was so funny, so well written and so well thought out and plotted that you're going to be hooked from the get go, just like I was. And just everything about this was just done perfectly. It's also not a very long book. This is the story of Ain, an eight year old boy who is on a mission from God to destroy the Emperor of the Ten Kings, but he cannot do it alone. He needs eight heroes with him, but in order to have these eight heroes on his journey, they first must die. And just a disclaimer, this is technically a part of a series, but it's a series of standalones that all take place in the same world, so there are more. I think there's two more out already in this world, but this is very much a standalone and uh, the story is fully en encompassed in, in this one volume. Yes, read it. In a similar fashion, I have Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. I adore this book. It's technically a part of a trilogy of standalones. So I've also read Bloody Rose, which I think it's, yeah, it's, it's up here right there. <laughs> but Bloody Rose I only gave four stars to. The first book, Kings of the Wild, is definitely my favorite and I've also actually reread it again on audio and I would still give it five stars. It's just so fun. You know there's a lot of reasons I love fantasy but a lot of fantasy tends to be very dark and gritty and intense. This is just fun, lighthearted, mucking about. <laughs> this is about Clay Cooper and his band um, who were these like famous famous mercenaries back in the old days and they were super famous all, all across the land but they have since grown old and started families and have basically disbanded. But something happens and Clay Cooper must go on a mission and first he must get the band back together. And this has so many pop culture references, so many music, like 70s rock music references, and just just everything about this is perfection. I love it. The audiobook was fantastic as well, but it's just really, really funny. Next is another recent five-star fantasy book for me, and that is 
The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong. So I talked about this in the best books that I read in 2023. It's just fantastic. Again, Asian inspired fantasy, but this one definitely focuses a lot on motherhood. It's basically about a mother and her son who are both fighters with this awesome kind of ice style magic. But unfortunately the village that they live in gets invaded by the opposing army and this is kind of their story of how they try to fight back. And again, it's kind of dark, tragic, made me cry. But at the same time, it's so epic and has some of the, definitely the best duel scene I've ever read in my life. And generally fantastic battle scenes. This was really perfect to read during winter because of that setting and the sort of ice magic that they have. And I just think it was fantastic. So if you haven't read this already, this is also an indie book and I would highly, highly recommend you picking this up. Next, I have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I've also talked about this book in so many of my videos because I read this years and years ago and, you know, I keep talking about it just because it's fantastic and I, I haven't found another book that is in any way similar to this. I feel like this is such a unique book. I, maybe it's just in my head, but if you've read and liked this and you have recommendations that kind of remind you of this, please let me know. Basically, this is a fantasy story about a magical circus that appears during the night and then just as swiftly disappears again and pops up in a different time and place altogether. And we follow the story of the protagonists who try to learn the secrets of this magical circus. And again, it's something about the writing and the atmosphere that Erin Morgenstern creates in this book that I just found so incredibly beautiful and I absolutely loved reading every word of this. Next I have a Brandon Sanderson <laughs> novella. This is The Emperor's Soul. Now, Brandon Sanderson is probably my favorite author and you will see a lot of his books in the other video <laughs> about the series. Because he mostly writes series, I actually don't have any of his standalones in here except this one. And this is also technically, I mean, it's part of the larger universe that he's created called the Cosmere, but it is a standalone novella. You can absolutely read this as a standalone, but if you do read it as part of sort of the bigger Cosmere universe, you will see, you know, little things that interconnect. But honestly, this is fantastic. And I think it's a fantastic introduction to Sanderson as an author. If you, I'm sure you've heard of Sanderson, but if you haven't read any of his books and you're a bit intimidated to start any of his larger series, I honestly think this is probably the best place to start with his books because it's so well done, this little book. And I'm sure that if you will like this, you will like his other books as well. This is the story of Shai who gets imprisoned and given an impossible task, and that is to forge a new soul for the emperor. And she's not allowed to leave her captivity until she does this and she has a hundred days to forge a new soul. Another book I've spoken to at length on this channel is A Dowry of Blood by S.D. Gibson. This is again a novella. This is a sort of fantasy horror. It's basically a reimagining of Dracula, but in this universe, Dracula is in a polyamorous relationship and he has many brides over the course of hundreds of years. And this book is a collection of letters from his brides addressed to Dracula himself and kind of, you know, recounting the times when they met and, you know, they're basically like love letters. But again, this book, the writing was so phenomenal, so exquisite that you just enjoyed every single word of it. I'll also link the vlog in which I read this for the first time and talked about it if you want to find out more. And then the last fantasy book I have in this file is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Had to have a Neil Gaiman on this list and I think this is definitely my favorite of his. He pretty much only writes standalones, but I do think this was my favorite and apparently the only one I actually gave five stars to. The others were very close, but this is just fantastic. This edition as well is gorgeous and has some beautiful illustrations within, but this is essentially the story of a man who goes back to his childhood home and this you sort of wave of memories crashes upon him and he goes through those memories and 
discover some really fantastical, kind of messed up things hidden within uh, of all of the weird magical things that happened to him when he was a little boy and living there. This book is written with that sort of nostalgic feeling where even if obviously you're not the protagonist in this and these things are very fantastical, it makes you nostalgic about your own childhood in a very strange way. I actually have another small little book in here that I almost forgot about and that is The Giver by Lewis Lowry. So this is kind of a dystopian classic actually, it's one of the first dystopian books that in retrospect has been marked as dystopian. I'll be honest, I feel like this is one where I wouldn't give it five stars if I were to read it now, but at the time when I was really into dystopian novels um, and I read this, I really enjoyed it. So, But this is about a 12 year old boy called Jonas who lives in a utopia where there is no fear, there is no pain, and he is very much a part of this systematic community. When he turns 12, he is selected to receive special training from the giver who holds the sort of truth of this utopian universe and Jonas finds out the truth. <laughs> Next I have a smallish section of non-fiction books. I have more but these are all the physical books that I want to show you guys. I have more that I read on audio or kindle but this video is way too long Anyway, so I'm just gonna talk about a few. The first one is on writing by Stephen King. So this is part memoir or autobiography, part writing advice book that Stephen King wrote himself, of course, since it's an autobiography. And this is one of my favorite books on writing that I've read. I've actually mentioned it in uh, one of my recent videos, the best books on the writing craft that I've read. But this was really interesting and I think even if you're not a writer and you're not interested in the writing craft aspect part of it, at least the first half of this book will still be interesting if you are a fan of Stephen King and if you like his books because it's all about sort of how he became a writer. And I just think it's really fascinating and obviously Stephen King is such a huge name in, in the fiction community that it's just a really, really good book to read. So I would definitely recommend this to everyone, regardless of if you're a writer or not. <laughs> then I have two books on North Korea, very specific topic, but I have In Order to Live, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Freedom by Yeonmi Park, and then Nothing to Envy, Real Lives in North Korea by Barbara Demick. So both of these books are accounts on life in North Korea about people who grew up in the 90s, which was the worst time in the dictatorship. This is a personal account, by Yeonmi Park and then this is a journalist who interviewed a lot of North Korean defectors um, about their life and out of the two I think I would still probably give this one five stars simply because I feel like this was a, a more unbiased account because it offered multiple perspectives whereas this was a very biased one. But I just remember being really impacted when I read both of these and for whatever reason it was really fascinating to me at the time to read about the horrible things that take place in North Korea so that I guess I gave these five stars. So. And then the other non-fiction book that I gave five stars to was one that I read last year because it came out last year and that is the 10 year record of BTS called Beyond the Story. This is very specific. If you're a fan of BTS, which I very much am, you will obviously love this and I absolutely adore this, but I don't necessarily want to go into it because this is very specific, but it, I did give it five stars and I gave it five stars recently, therefore it is in this video. <laughs> yes Man by Danny Wallace. This is a strange book. I, I definitely remember having had an impact on me and the reason behind it, but again I feel like this is one of those books that was very much a testament of me reading it in a very very specific moment in life and I'm not sure I would give this five stars if I were to reread re it now or read it for the first time now. This again has a movie adaptation with Jim Carrey and it's essentially you know the book that that movie was based on and it's about this man called Danny Wallace you know who has a lot of anxiety and he generally says no to things and then one day he decides to 
change his life and say yes to everything. This is the story of sort of what he learns through that experience. And I remember it was definitely really funny, uh, but I do think the movie of this is probably better and maybe a better way to digest the same story. Next up, I have my contemporary fiction section and this first group I'm going to say is essentially all the works of one particular author who I definitely love, definitely is one of my favorite authors. I'm not sure I would still give all of these books five stars if I were to read them for the first time now. The author I'm talking about is John Green and I essentially have all of his books, all of his fiction books here that I've given five stars to all of them. I've also read his nonfiction uh, last year, which I liked, didn't give five stars to, but close. John Green is definitely an author that inspired my own writing and one of the authors that made me want to be an author myself, I guess. So they definitely mean a lot to me. And I do think some of these are completely brilliant. So just quickly, I have Will Grayson, Will Grayson, which is also by David Levithan, who you will see again a bit later. Then I have Paper Towns. This is definitely one of my favorites of his books. And if I were to reread them, I would say this and maybe one more, I would still probably give five stars to. There's also a really good movie adaptation of this one. Then I have Looking for Alaska, which is the very first John Green book that I read. Uh, it's also his debut and loved, absolutely loved at the time. Then I have An Abundance of Catherines. Then I have Turtles All the Way Down. This is the other one where I feel like I would still give five stars to. It also is his most recent fiction book, actually, which still came out a long time ago. But um, yeah, I really loved it when it came out. And then, of course, the one you're probably all most familiar with from John Green is The Fault in Our Stars. I love all of his books, genuinely. And I'm really hoping he comes out with another fiction book. Because there's just something about this style of writing that really, really appeals to me. But thankfully, there are more authors that I love who are similar to John Green, which I will talk about now. And actually, let's talk about David Levithan, who also co-wrote Will Grayson with Grayson Will with John Green. But this is his book, Every Day, which I absolutely loved. And this is kind of a magical realism slash contemporary book about A, who every single day wakes up in the body of a different person. And on one of these days, they fall in love with one of the people that they meet during uh, one of these days. And then the rest of the book is them trying to get back to that person by, you know, waking up in the body of someone different every day. So you can imagine that that is quite difficult. But uh, I really love this. This was a really fantastically plotted book. And it sounds like a really complicated premise to pull off, but David Levithan definitely pulls it off. And it's, it's also funny and heartwarming and just all around. Great, so I, I do think I would still probably give this five stars. Another one of my favorite contemporary authors, I have two of her books here, even though I've read all of her books also, but apparently I only gave these two five stars, and that is I Was Born For This and Radio Silence by Alice Osman. There is another book I actually gave five stars to of hers, but that will be in the other video. And if you know this author's work, you probably know which one I'm talking about. But anyway, her novels are fantastic. She is definitely, along with John Green, um, one of my favorite white contemporary authors. And I absolutely adored both of these books. I Was Born For This is about fandom. It follows two POVs, one of a member of a really, really popular boy band and then another POV of one of his biggest fans and how they sort of cross paths. But it's not a love story. It's a friendship story. It's a fandom story. It was just fantastic. I loved it. And Radio Silence is about Francis, who has a podcast called Radio Silence. And this podcast kind of goes viral. A, a lot of, actually, I think all of Alice Osman's books are mostly centered around friendship. There's very little romance and all the characters 
uh, diverse and beautiful and just everything I want in a YA contemporary book. They're incredibly funny, um, they're set in the UK, just I absolutely adore Alice Osman and if you only know her from Heartstopper, I urge you to pick up some of her novels as well because they are fantastic. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This is definitely one of my favorite YA contemporary books and I think still one I would definitely give five stars to this day. Again, it's just something that really appeals to me about this book. This is about a wallflower and it's written in sort of diary formats in his freshman year of high school, I'm pretty sure, and he befriends some older students. There's also a movie adaptation with Emma Watson in it, which is really good. And I guess in some ways I relate to this character and yeah, it was just really good when I read it when I was a teenager, but also I feel like I would still like it now as well. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This is about Simon who is gay, but he is not come out to anyone and then um, I'm pretty sure he gets outed by someone from what I remember and then they're trying to blackmail him. This is again one of those books that at the time when it was released it was sort of fresh and in some ways groundbreaking. We didn't have a lot of LGBTQ representation at the time when this was published in YA. So now obviously that is very different. I think this is a testament of the time when this was published and when I read it myself and I, I remember really, really enjoying it and it won a bunch of awards um, and it's great. I would, I would still recommend this. And the last three books are, now that I look at them, definitely books I would absolutely still give five stars to because I think about these books a lot um, and I love them. They're one of my favorites. They're three of my favorite books of all time. First one is I'll Give You the Sun by Dandy Nelson. <laughs> I, I, this is another one I feel like I really want to reread because I remember this having such an impact on me when I first read it. And the writing that Dandy Nelson does in this was so impactful to me that I, I remember thinking, I wish one day I would write as well as she does in this particular book. This is another diverse story about two twins, Noah and Jude, and they used to be really, really close as twins usually are when they were younger, but now that they're in their teens, they have slowly drifted apart from each other and we follow both of their POVs as they both fall in love with different boys and how that goes. And it's a lovely coming of age story that is beautifully written, has some really incredible themes that I've rarely seen in contemporary novels. So I would definitely recommend this. Then I have The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. And this is one of the books that also broke me. It is such a kind of dark YA contemporary, I would say, but it's beautifully written, beautifully plotted. And it's about a group of friends three friends and what happens to them. Again, coming of age story. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> I remember there being so many moments that were so relatable to me in this and, and characters that are just so well written that you can't help but fall in love with them regardless of their flaws. It's definitely more on the sort of dark side of YA, this one I would say. And then lastly, I have Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca. Zapia. So this is a very interesting book because it's also a comic at the same time and it's sort of an in-universe comic that is also part of the actual story. This is also I guess in a way similar to Radio Silence by Alice Osman. so if you like that book I would recommend this. This is about Eliza who is very shy and antisocial in real life but she uh, creates this webcomic that goes insanely viral. But her comic strip is so incredibly popular that she has fans writing fan fiction about it. But no one knows that she is the author. So she's like an, an anonymous author of this webcomic. But her biggest fan fiction writer moves to her school, but she doesn't want him to know or anyone to know who is actually behind this, this webcomic. And yeah, it's, it's again a coming of age story about really, really passionate teens. It's really funny, heartbreaking, all about friendship, bit of love, just everything I really want in a YA contemporary, so 
definitely recommend this. That was a lot of books. Um, I dread the thought of making the other video, which is all the books in the series, because there are more in that one. So if you stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome. <laughs> I hope I gave you some good recommendations um, and some books to, to look up after this. Definitely let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Otherwise, what is a standalone that you gave five stars to? It's interesting to me that I gave so many books five stars and I feel like it's making me rethink how I rate books these days because it is so rare for me to rate something five stars nowadays. And I really wonder why that is. I know it's probably because I've just read a lot more, so my standards are higher. And because I read so much, to have something be five stars, it has to really blow me away and become one of my new favorites. But is that really the right justification for giving something five stars? I'm not sure. Let me know your thoughts. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video and otherwise I will see you next time with a new video and hopefully with the companion video to this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye!